Hello everyone, my name is Alexis and welcome to today's yoga class. I want to make sure that you have at least one block. Um, if you don't have a block, grab a shipping box, maybe like an Amazon Prime box or a heavy textbook, something you can have to give you a little bit of a boost when we go through half moon pose later. Once you have that, join me in a wide-legged child's pose on your mat and begin to tune into your breath. Like always, we want to focus our breath at the beginning of each class so we can really come into this present moment. This yoga class is for Pride Month and it is an offering to honor all identities, no matter how you identify, no matter who you truly are. This yoga class, I hope, will give you a vehicle to find radical compassion and radical acceptance of yourself, however and whoever you are. One of the things I love about yoga is that it enables us to zoom out of the binaries that plague our current society. We see things very uh, dualistic, right or wrong, good or evil, black or white, male, female, and there's not a lot of room for, for shades of gray or for color. And so many of us don't fit into that binary. And so I hope throughout the course of this class, we'll be moving through some heart openers, uh, some balancing poses to really work on our third eye. And we'll be working with the sacral chakra a little bit as well. I hope this can inspire a place where you can come on your mat whenever you need it to know that here within the four corners of your mat, you are safe exactly as you are doesn't matter who you are, who you love, how you want to live in the world. Here on your mat, you are safe and accepted. And that's one of the beautiful things about pride, too, is pride is about honoring and accepting whoever you are and hope that there can be a future where all types of people are accepted and loved for who they are as well. We're going to be moving in and out of child's pose and a few other poses next. So on your next inhale, come forward onto your hands and let your hips fall forward, coming into our hanging cobra pose. And then you'll exhale back into child's pose. We're gonna do this a few times. So inhale, come forward, let your hips hang, open up across the entire chest, and then exhale back into your child's pose. We'll do this about four more times. So keep moving on your own breath with every inhale. You're opening up across the entire torso from the collarbones all the way down to the hips. And then of course you're exhaling into child's pose, a very safe, nurturing pose. Let's do a few more, two more, inhaling forward onto the knees, letting the hips stretch and release, exhaling back to child's pose. Last one, inhale forward into cobra. Beautiful, maybe hold it a second and then exhale back into child's pose. And on your next inhale, come up into tabletop pose. Like always, hips over knees, shoulders over wrists, firm up through your core, really flatten your back so I could balance a T-set on your back and begin to work through your cat cow. So inhale, broaden across your chest, open up your collarbones, shine your heart forward and exhale, scoop your spine up to the ceiling. And just move through some cat cows. If you want to get really creative and fun here, you can do some barrel rolls. You can do some body rolls. You can stay doing cat cow if you want. But if you want to kind of play and do some intuitive movement here, feel free. Like I said, these four corners of your yoga mat are a safe space. So you can look as dorky or as graceful as you want. And here you are safe to move and to feel whatever and however you need to. Just take a few more deep breaths here. Maybe one last cat cow. Beautiful. And then go ahead and tuck your toes back underneath you. Walk your hands forward and press your hips all the way up into a downward facing dog. And start with your knees nice and bent. Make sure your sternum is reaching towards the mat. You're pressing through your hands, through the knuckles of your first finger and your thumb allowing your ears to rest between your biceps and then maybe walk out your downward dog, bending one knee and then the other still breathing nice and deep. And then I want you to pick up the right foot and place the toes around your left 
ankle. So big toe and second toe on either side of your ankle and really press into the mat with that left heel. So we're coming into a one-legged downward dog to really stretch through the back of the left leg. And continue to breathe here and then we'll switch to the other side. So right foot comes down to the mat. And this time your left toes, your left big toe and second toe, wrap around the right ankle. Really pressing that right heel into the mat. Beautiful. Bring the left foot back to center. Walk out your dog one more time. And on your next inhale, roll forward into upward facing dog. You can keep the toes tucked under, or if you would like to, you can untuck the toes. Either way, keep your core nice and firm. And then exhale back into downward facing dog. Just like our hanging cobras, we're going to move through a few of these. Inhale, come forward into upward facing dog. Exhale, press back into downward facing dog. Just a couple more. We'll do about four more. So inhaling forward, keeping your core nice and firm, even as you're stretching through your whole torso and the tops of your legs. And then you're using your arms and your shoulders and your core to pull you back into downward facing dog, pressing back into your feet again. Let's go ahead and do one or two more. Exhale back into downward facing dog. Very nice. And then inhale the right leg up to the ceiling. Really reach the toes up to the sky. And then exhale, bring the right foot between the hands. Pivot the left foot and come on up into your warrior two. So make sure, set yourself up for success here. You want to make sure you have heel to arch alignment. So the right heel lines up with the middle of the arch of the left foot. Shoulders over your hips. Lift the arms out into a T and look over that right hand towards the front of your mat. And everybody can say hi to my cat, Bernoulli, who is joining us today. Take several deep breaths in your warrior two. Allow yourself to feel powerful here. Inhale and lean back towards the back of the mat for your reverse warrior, stretching your right arm up overhead. Breathing still deeply here. Your legs don't change. You're just stretching towards the back of your mat. Getting a nice side stretch. Beautiful. Exhale, come forward. Bring the right elbow to rest on the right thigh for your side ankle pose. And if you want to, you can always rest your hand on a block in front of your foot instead. Breathing nice and deeply here in your side ankle pose. Again, legs stay the same. We're just moving the torso. Beautiful. Come back into your warrior two. Bring your left hand to your hip. Pop the left foot forward and grab your block. We're going to come into half moon pose. So you want the block to be underneath your shoulder. Your right hand and right foot keep you stable. And then lift the left leg behind you and open up your hips. Flex your left foot quite a lot and open the left arm up to the ceiling. You're basically wanting to create a 90 degree angle with your legs. It's actually a little bit like an open hipped warrior three. You're trying to open up your hips to the ceiling. You can use that block to really keep you stable. If you're feeling super strong, you can bring your hands to heart center. If your balance is really on point today, take another deep breath in. You're doing amazing. Exhale, let the left foot fall back to the mat, come into a runner's lunge and step back into plank and make your way to downward facing dog. Whether that's you just press back or you move through a vinyasa or you move through lowering down to the mat and cobra. Either way, meet us back in downward facing dog. Walk out your feet just a little bit. And when you're ready, inhale the left leg up to the ceiling, really stretch through those hips. Very nice. And then exhale the left foot between the hands, pivot the right foot so it's parallel to the shortage of your mat and come up into your warrior two. Again, take note of your heel to arch alignment bringing your arms out into a T-shape to the side, and then keep that front knee, that left knee directly over the left ankle. I want so much strength in your legs here. You're pressing into the mat and you're also lifting up out of your joints. Feel powerful here. Inhale forward to go back into your reverse warrior, lifting that left arm up over your head, breathing deeply. Your right hand can rest either on your thigh or your calf. Just don't rest it on your knee. You're doing amazing. And then exhale forward into your side angle pose. And again, you can use your block in front of your hand or you can just rest the left elbow 
on your thigh. And again, keep your legs the same. Keep that deep bend in the left knee. Really press into your feet. Beautiful. Come back up to warrior two. Bring your right hand to your hip. Hop your right foot forward. Grab your block in your left hand. And we'll come into half moon on the left side. So your left foot and your left hand are anchored on the block and the mat to stabilize you. And open up your hips. Lift the right leg up to the ceiling. Flex that right foot as much as you can. And then lift the right leg so it's in line with your torso. And then if you feel stable, you can open your right arm up to the ceiling. Or if you're feeling super balancey today, again, you can bring your hands to heart center, keeping the legs and the torso exactly the same. Beautiful. Breathe. I want you to feel open and powerful in this pose. Half moon is a hard pose, but beautiful. Let the right leg fall back to the mat. Come into your runner's lunge and step back into your plank pose. Very nice. And then again, make your way back into downward facing dog, however you like. You can challenge yourself. You can be gentle with yourself, whatever you need. When you get back to downward dog, inhale the right leg up to the ceiling and step the right foot forward between the hands coming into your high lunge. Inhale the arms up overhead. Very nice. Just a few breaths here in your high lunge. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Bring the left arm forward, right arm back for your high twist. Or if you want to go further, you can bring the right hand to reach behind you to your left thigh and lift the left arm up overhead for a deeper twist with a wee bit of a back bend there. And just breathe. Your legs are still in your powerful high lunge. Your right knee is directly over your right ankle. Just stretching and breathing. Very nice. Come back to center. Exhale the hands to your hips. Bend into the left knee. Spring up onto the right foot and extend the left leg out in front of you. Straight. Very nice. And it doesn't matter if the leg's not straight. It doesn't matter how high you're lifting it. I just want you to try to lift it and straighten it as much as you can. Work within your own range of motion. Please don't hurt your knees. <laughs> Go gentle on yourself. Beautiful. Point the foot, bend the left knee, and bring the foot, the left foot to the left bum cheek. Reach your left hand behind you. Press your hips forward and stretch out your quads here. Now you can stay in this quad stretch or you can come with me into dancer pose. You'll flip your grip on your hand, on your foot, excuse me, and then press the foot into your hand. So you're not so much leaning forward and stretching your leg behind you. I want you to create resistance as you press your foot into your hand. That resistance is going to lift your leg behind you and open across your chest. Your hips really should not be opening up much at all here. Beautiful. Take one more deep breath in and then exhale. Come back into your quad stretch. Step the left leg behind you and pivot around to the front of your mat, or excuse me, to the side of your mat to come into your wide-legged forward fold. So both feet are parallel to the short edges of your mat. And you're hinging at the hips, folding forward. And again, just breathe here. Very nice. Continuing to inhale and exhale. Allow yourself to practice accepting who you are as you are. Forward folds are great for being able to look into ourselves, see ourselves, and practice compassion. Beautiful. Turn the left toes to the back of the mat and exhale, bend the left knee and come into Skandasana one-legged squat and if you don't make it down as far as me that's totally fine if you want to block under your bum or you're just up higher that's fine just breathe here focus on the sensation of the stretch in your inner right leg it's a little bit of a balancing posture too so beautiful come back into your wide-legged forward fold walk the hands to the top of the mat coming into your runner's lunge with your right leg bent plant the hands step back into plank and make your way into downward dog however you choose like usual yogi's choice very nice 
You make it back into your downward dog. Maybe walk it out a little bit, bending one knee and then the other. Inhale the left leg high and exhale, plant the left foot between the hands, come on up into your high lunge. Inhaling the arms up overhead, left knee is directly over the left ankle, your right toes are curled underneath, and I want you to be pressing into the mat just as much here in your high lunge as you were in warrior two. So you're using your feet to ground you into the mat, to stabilize you into the mat so that you can lift up out of your hips and out of your shoulders. Beautiful. Take another deep breath in and this time exhale the right arm forward, left arm back, and you can stay in the high twist or you can reach the left hand behind you to the right thigh, reach the right arm up overhead for a twisted high lunge with a little bit of a back bend. Very nice. Continue to breathe. Maybe smile. You are powerful and graceful. Exactly where you need to be. Inhale, come back to center. Bring the hands to the hips. Spring forward onto the left foot and extend the right leg out in front of you. Trying to straighten it and lift it a little bit higher with every breath. Pick one point to focus on. This is your drishti point. It is a movable, immovable point of focus. This will also help you balance. A few more deep breaths here. Beautiful. And then bend the right knee, reach behind you and pull the right foot towards the bum for your quad stretch and push your hips forward. Not so much that you're in a back bend, but just imagine you can press your hips forward to get a nice stretch along the front of your hip. Beautiful. And you can stay here or you can flip your grip and come into dancer with me. Press the right foot into the right hand. And again, it's you're creating this dynamic opposition where you're pressing your foot into your hand. That pressure is what lifts the foot, lifts the leg and opens the chest. Your left arm can reach out in front of you or it can stay on your hip as well, whichever is more comfortable and more stable for you. Beautiful. Take one more deep breath in. And exhale very gently. Come back into your hamstring stretch. Beautiful. Extend the right leg behind you. Swivel your feet and come to the face, the side of your mat. Inhale the arms up overhead and exhale. Fold forward into your wide-legged forward fold. Make sure both feet are parallel to the short edge of the mat. Maybe your toes are a little pigeon-toed. And again, just breathe and rest in this wide-legged forward fold. No matter how you identify and no matter what you think of yourself, yoga offers us the tools to be able to accept ourselves and to have pride for who we are. There's beautifully no judgment in yoga. Go ahead and turn the right toes out and bend into the right knee coming into Skandasana on the other side. Beautiful. Breathing in and out, feeling the nice stretch in the left thigh. And again, if you need a block under your bum here, that's totally fine. Take another deep breath in. And on the exhale, press into the right foot, lift all the way back up into your wide-legged forward fold, and then walk your hands to the left, pivot the left foot, come into your runner's lunge, plant the hands on the mat, step the left foot back into your plank pose, and make your way to your downward facing dog, however you like, whether that's straight back to down dog, through chaturanga, however you like. And here in your downward facing dog, we're going to do that same little stretch that we did at the beginning of class. So straighten your legs as much as you can, and then bring your right toes to wrap around the left ankle and really press into the mat with that left heel. Feel the stretch all along the back of your left calf, the glute, the hamstring behind the knee. You're still really pressing into the hands here as much as you can. 
Beautiful. And we'll switch legs. So place the right foot back on the mat and bring the left toes behind the right ankle, pressing the right heel into the mat. Couple more breaths. Very nice. Take one more deep breath in. Bring the left foot back to the mat. Give yourself one last push into your most true downward facing dog. And then exhale, lower the knees onto the mat and turn to face the long edge of your mat like I am. And I'm gonna come to kind of one edge of my mat. We're coming into gate pose. So make sure your knees are directly below your hips and extend your right leg out to the side. Your right foot is parallel to the shortage of your mat. Inhale the arms up overhead and exhale, side bend over to that right leg, just to get a nice stretch through the obliques and also through that hip that we did spend a little bit of time working with all that half moon poses and warriors and lunges. Beautiful, come back up to center and let that left arm come to the mat behind you and press your hips forward, swivel the right arm up overhead to come into a baby wild thing. Beautiful. Come back to center. Come back up onto your knees. And I'm waddling over to the other side of my mat <laughs> so I can extend this time the left leg out beside me. And again, your left foot is parallel to the shortage of your mat. Inhale the arms up and side bend to the left over that left leg. And you can look up where your right arm is reaching up overhead or you can look down, whatever is most comfortable for you. Either way, you're continuing to breathe. Beautiful. Take another deep breath in. Bring that right arm behind you. Press the hips forward and let your back arch just a little bit into your baby wild thing. You're doing beautifully. Allow this chest opener, this heart opener to allow you to accept your own self. Come back up to kneeling and we're just going to shimmy to the back of our mats. Open your knees wide and we're going to come into our wide legged child's pose just like we began class. Let your chest fall between your knees. You can stretch your arms out in front of you or you can gently bend your knees or excuse me, bend your elbows and rest your head on your hands. Whatever is most comfortable here. few deep breaths and just center yourself here on the mat. Let yourself find safety. No matter how you identify, no matter who you are, or how you want to live your life, you are valid. You are important and you belong. Go ahead and press up out of your child's pose and meet me in a gentle cross-legged position. If you want to cross your legs in front of you, you can. If you want to kneel, you can. Um, and if you want to prop your hips up on a pillow or a blanket, you're welcome to as well. We're going to finish this class with a gentle meditation. This is one of my favorites. It is a mantra meditation. And the mantra is Sat Nam. You might have heard this before, but Sat Nam translated essentially means truth is my identity or I am truth. And I think this is a very powerful mantra when your identity kind of goes against the grain of what society says is normal. Begin to take deep breaths, bring your attention to your heart space and begin to chant Sat Nam, Sat Nam, Sat Nam. You can do this aloud, you can do this in your mind, you can just chant it as it is, or if you like, you can inhale and silently or audibly chant Sat, and exhale and silently or audibly chant Nam. Again, yogi's choice, but I want you to chant Sat Nam 
to yourself and dwell on this idea that whoever you are, however you are, you are true. You are valid. And it doesn't matter what other people will call you. It doesn't matter how other people will identify you. Ultimately, you know who you are better than anyone else. That's what this journey of yoga is. It's to uncover who we are, to become better people, and to create a better world. The more you know yourself, the more you accept yourself, the more you accept your truth, the more you can do that for others. And there is no downside to a world with more compassion and understanding. I'll leave you for the next couple minutes to continue this chant of Sat Nam on your own. Go ahead and release the chant, release any breath work you were doing. And for a moment, bring your awareness back to your heart center. If you want to bring your hands to your heart, you can. Allow yourself to feel bathed and drenched in this idea that you are valid and true. And whoever you are is equally important and belonged. When you're ready, inhale the arms down, around and up overhead, 
exhale your hands to your third eye. Take another deep breath in. Exhale your hands to heart center. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. I hope you enjoyed this class. Come back to it whenever you need it. If you ever feel lost or like you don't belong, this is the class for you. I hope it was validating. And if you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I loved making this class for you. And if you want to see more of this sort of thing, uh, maybe more social justice oriented, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe (laughs) for more yoga. And until next time, have a lovely rest of your day. Bye for now.